Welcome to Technical Tuesday. This is Fed Razak, Senior Trading Strategist here at CM Trading. And today we're going to continue our money management series with discussing wins versus losses. But before we start, make sure to smash the like button. And if you do see value in this content, please do share and subscribe to our channel. So, wins versus losses. Now, one of the simplest businesses that you can compare trading to is running a grocery store. Yes, this is where business sense is applied to trading sense. Now, if you've been to a grocery store, and I'm sure you have, you've walked up and down the aisles and there's many kinds of products. Now watch this. This is where it becomes very important. How does a grocery store run its business? Now this is very important. This is where you got to look at the accounting side of it. Now, each grocery store has a net real estate value of the size of their store. So if, well, let's say it's a thousand square meters or a hundred square meters, whatever it is, if you aggregate all the costs involved in running per square meter, so you add the rent, you add the wages for the cashier, for the people shelving or anybody else that you need, you add the utilities, water, electric, etc., all the expenses, you add it up and you divide it by the amount of square meters, you get the cost of running the store per square meter. Very simple, right? So at any given time, a store will know whether or not they're profitable at any part of their store, whether or not to see that those items are selling or not. Now, as a grocery store, not every item do you make money on. It's simply put, there are items that you actually lose money on. So what kind of items do you lose money running a grocery store? Well, it's very simple items. The ones that we consume almost on a daily basis. It's items like milk or bread or eggs. These are just common items. Now, if a store is losing money on these items, why would they carry it? That's the big question. And the reason they're carrying it is because it's simple. We wouldn't walk into the store unless they carried these items, right? Everybody consumes milk or bread and eggs. These are staples that we all consume. Now, when you're buying these items, you also have to buy some condiments to go with them, right? So those items, they're actually profiting on. So what are we talking about? We're talking about peanut butter, right? You can't just go into a store just getting peanut butter though. It's too dry of a sandwich. So you gotta add some jam onto it, right? And then you got peanut butter and jam sandwich. But guess what? You get to the checkout point and you think of your significant other because you know better and you see some chocolate and you gotta buy some chocolate for your significant other coming home, right? So these are all items that the grocery store actually makes money on. So let's apply it to trading. So I've got two traders here. I have Jack and I have Jill. Now both of them are making 10 trades. Nine of them are gonna be either profitable ones or they're gonna be losses. But one of them is gonna be making money on that last 10 or losing money on that last 10. And so the question is, who's the profitable trader? Now it's a trick question because it depends on how much each trader is making. So let's take Jack for example. He makes one trade. He makes $25. Woohoo! Good for him. Okay, now he makes another trade, another $25, and another trade, and another trade, and another trade, and another trade. So he makes six profitable trades of $25. Seventh trade, he makes another $25. Eighth trade, ninth trade. Now, this is a pretty good winning streak, right? But guess what? On his last trade, he loses $525. And if you aggregate the entire amount, he's a net loss trader of $300, right? Not a type of environment you want to be. You don't want to be losing one big trade against all these winnings, okay? Now we have Jill, who's the opposite trader. She's losing $25 on nine trades, okay? And on that one trade, she's making $525 and she's a net positive trader of $300. Now this is a simplified version of what it means to have wins versus losses towards either your favor or your gain. Now as long as you're losing smaller than that one trade, you could be a net profitable trader even if you're profitable only once out of 10 times. That's amazing. And that's what we're looking to replicate. One of the most fundamental things that I learned in trading first coming into the business 
is that my trade is at a loss before I even start. So to get out of it and not to create it into a bigger loss was simple to get out of it. A lot of us are attached emotionally to the trade thinking that this is gonna be the trade that I have to make money on, that I have to continuously only make money on every single trade. It's not true. If you run your trading business like a grocery store, you'll realize that there are some trades that you lose money on, but they're the cost of running the business, just like trading is. There's a cost of running the business, and that's taking the trades. Now, at a certain point, you don't want it to get out of hand. You want to be like Jack, who's losing on one that blows his entire account off. You want to be like Jill, taking small, small, little losses, but taking that one hit that's going to bring her into the positive. My name is Fred Razak. Thank you for joining me today. We'll see you here next week. Thank you.